many people, we like a good crunchy hard pretzel. One of the problems we found, however, is that most of the better tasting pretzels are coated with salt, which raises the sodium level of it and makes it not a great snack food. And those pretzels that have no surface salt tend to be the little undistinguished ones that really don't excite. So we started out on a journey to try to find a reasonably good facsimile of a hard pretzel. Now I say facsimile because real hard pretzels are boiled in lye, and we don't like them that much. But we experimented with some recipes. After having found some that advertised they were for hard pretzels, since most of the pretzel recipes that you see are for soft pretzels, which are sort of more bagel-like, and I gave this one a try, and it was quite good. It was not absolutely perfect. You will not confuse this with an Utz pretzel or whoever else makes pretzels, but it's a darn good pretzel, and we coated it with sesame seeds and kept the salt in the dough itself on the low side. So it's really relatively healthful as far as snack foods go. So what I've done here is I've put my dry ingredients in my mixing bowl. And I used one and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, one and a half cups of bread flour, one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, two teaspoons of brown sugar, packed, and a half teaspoon of salt. And I put those in my mixing bowl, and I'm going to just mix them all up, and I'm going to add then about a cup of warm water. I've added the cup of warm water. I'm going to test the dough for consistency. I know you probably hate recipes that say do it until it feels right, but what I have here, it's a little sticky, but not very sticky, and it's loose, and I'd rather add flour later if I need it than add water later. And all of the flour has been taken up by the liquid, so what I'm going to do now is switch to the dough hook and knead this following the advice of the KitchenAid people on a number two for no more than three minutes. I've adapted all my recipes having stripped the gears on my older KitchenAid by kneading it vigorously and seeing it through its straining and not realizing that I was actually killing the machine. And they were very clear. They said do it no more than three minutes and do no more than a two or maybe a three. So any recipe that says put it at a four for ten minutes and some of the better known bread recipes do. Ignore them unless you like shelling out a couple of hundred bucks periodically for a new mixer. So I'm going to insert the dough hook, which you may have noted is a new design. Apparently it does a better job kneading. This, by the way, is the seven quart KitchenAid which is more difficult to use with small amounts of dough, but is wonderful for those double or triple recipes that they don't then go all over the place. Always remember to raise the bowl because it doesn't mix very well if you don't. And here we go. Three minutes. All right, the dough looks done now. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. It's always good when it cleans the beater. It tells you it's about the way you want it. And it looks like this. It's less sticky than it was before, but it's nice and soft and pliable. And I found that a light dough 
work well for getting the pretzels crisp and crunchy. But you'll see how nicely that works when we move on to the next step. I need to let the dough rise until doubled, which should take about an hour. I've set my oven on its proofing cycle, since it's too cold here today to just leave it out at room temperature. And I don't want to wait around for hours. Dough will rise at cool temperatures, but you don't want to wait four or five hours for a rise. And I really don't feel the need to clean the bowl. What I did was I spilled in a little oil, maybe a teaspoon or so, and I roll it around just to grease the surface, which is fairly conventional. And I'll estimate, you know that it's doubled when you put your finger in and an indentation remains. So here's what the dough looks like in the bowl. I'm going to put the cover on it, and I'm going to put it in to proof or to ferment, as they say, in the more primary fermentation, they call it, in the more technical uh, bread books. And we'll come back when it's risen. I'll show you what it looks like, and we'll proceed to shape it. I just pulled the dough out of the oven. I gave it an hour. And remember, this is a large bowl and the dough was pretty far down. But if I give it the finger test, as you can see, the indentation remains, and that tells me that this is done. Now the next step is to divide it up and roll it out. I've prepared a sheet with baking parchment on it. The pretzels get rolled out however you want to roll them out. Then we'll cover them with plastic wrap that's been greased and put it back in to proof for another half an hour or so, at which point the boiling fun part begins. If you've never done that, it's the kind of thing you do when you make bagels. And the boiling in the water that has a certain amount of baking powder in it, and I think brown sugar, I'll check the recipe, helps give it its characteristic flavor. All right, so the actual recipe, it said to divide it into 24 pieces and roll them into large lengths, long lengths. But I'm going to divide this into eight pieces. If you're really very fussy, you can scale out your dough if you need to make things even. It's absorbed the oil, which makes it very easy to handle. See, it's no, no longer sticky. And I don't want flour because that will make it harder to roll it out. I'm using a rule pad mat, which is a wonderful product. It lets you roll things out. So let me just get a paper towel and get some of this grease off. And I think for the rolling, I better take, take off my sweatshirt, which I'm wearing because it's cold out today and not all that warm in the kitchen. But I don't want to get my sleeves in it because dough is messy. I think that should be more manageable. All right, now what I'm going to do is take this nice relaxed dough and I'm going to roll it. When you roll, use the palms of your hands and the heels of your hands. Your fingers don't work that well. And you don't really need to be too fussy. These are informal, homemade pretzels, but you'd like to get them around the same month. And as you roll, you start in the middle, work your way out. Obviously, I took too much dough here, so let me set that aside. And since I don't want them to be too long when I put them in the pot of water, I'm going to cut this, I think, about like that. That looks like a nice pretzel size. And I discovered from the last time I made it that these really rise. I discovered that, yeah. Okay, I discovered that when I had to pry them apart. So I'm not going to make that mistake. In fact, I even bought another baking sheet, a nice heavy aluminum one, which is just like the one, the well-worn one that I have, just so I have enough room 
to spread thing to spread them out. All right, so this should be about right. This should not give me a lot of trouble. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll them out till all the dough is rolled. And then I'll show you what that all looks like. We'll put the plastic on and we'll give it its second rising. Here are my shaped pretzels. I used up all the dough. The dividing into eighths was not quite enough, but it's easy enough to just cut a rope in half if you need more rolling room. Put it on the parchment and covered it with plastic wrap that was greased with Pam cooking spray. Or you could oil it. And it's going back into the proofing oven for about a half an hour, after which we'll pull it out and give it its boiling and then it'll be ready to bake. So I'll see you in about a half an hour. After about 30 minutes, I checked my little pretzel wannabes and determined that they were risen about right. This is what they look like. Strictly pretzel-like, but a lot better than the last batch I tried, and they haven't risen together. Because this was greased, it comes off easily. Now, in the meantime, what I did was I put together eight cups of water and a quarter cup each of baking soda, not powder, baking soda, and brown sugar. And that I have at a simmer. I also preheated the oven. I'm using it on a convection setting because I have two racks and I want them to bake evenly. So I set it for 425 convection, which would be about the same as 450 in a regular oven if you have a large enough oven or just making one sheet. And the game plan is to drop them in here, let them simmer. They should float almost immediately because of the air that's been created. Let them simmer for about 15 seconds. I scoop them out, and although the original recipe said to use tongs, this works better. Shake off the water, put them back here, and as soon as you put them back, sprinkle them with sesame seeds. Many of the recipes call for brushing it with beaten egg white afterward, but when they come out wet and tacky, the seeds stick fine, and that's the way you make bagels. So if it's good enough for bagels, it should be good enough for pretzels. All right, so it looks, the, it looks as though we're about ready here, and they're coming off the sheet easily, which is good. And I'm going to drop them in, and they're floating almost immediately. I'm going to get in as many as I can without crowding. I think maybe I'll just... Oh, that works. And we'll wait approximately 15 seconds. Eat a little bit. There are no real guidelines on this. You don't want it boiling so much it breaks the dough apart. But what this does is it, give, it will give it its characteristic uh, slightly glazed appearance that you don't get any other way. When you do bagels, you do it 30 seconds to a minute, but a lot of that depends on the recipe, and bagels tend to sink and then they float. All right, so these are about done. So what I'm going to do is take them out, put them back on the sheet. This gets a little dicey, but they don't stick. And since I've allowed plenty of room, I'm not going to run into the same kind of trouble as I had last time. Okay, almost done. Three more little guys to go. them up for the ones that aren't in yet. Okay, that's bad for one. Now I'm going to take the sesame seeds and sprinkle them over. It's instead of the salt, you really need to put something on it. That signal was that my oven has reached cruising altitude so that when these are ready, I can put them in. And I'm going to put in the next batch. When I'm done with this tray, I move on to the next tray. And when they're all ready, then I'm going to put them in. And we'll bake it for about 15 minutes at the higher heat setting. And that's to brown and crisp the outside. When they look nice and brown, 
They stay in there, and I turn it down to about 225, 250, and I give it a longer time in there. Let me just check. Don't have this completely memorized. All right, the 15 minutes at the higher heat, turn it down to 250, and bake for another 30 minutes, keeping an eye on it. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So let me get these done, and then we'll move on to the next step. I've boiled all of the little pretzels, and they're now ready to go in the oven. Let me just repeat that I'm putting them in at a convection 425. I'll give them 15 minutes and check for brownness. You can check that in your own oven and see if they look nicely brown, but not too dark. Then turn it down to 250 and give it another half an hour or so. You can check periodically to see if they're crisping up. And I'll show you what they look like when they take them out of the oven. It's a little difficult determination because they will probably crisp a little more once they cool. So you want to get it so that they are not burned, but won't get chewy, because I've been there, done that, and chewy pretzels are not what you want. All right, so into the oven these go, and we'll pull them out when they seem to be done. slight adjustment in the recipe. At 13 minutes at the higher heat, that was 425 convection, they looked as though they were browned enough. So I turned it down at that point, but I turned it down to 200 degrees convection because I was concerned with overbrowning and I wanted to give it enough time to dry out. It's now been in a little bit over 25 minutes. We just tasted one and it tastes as though once it's fully cooled, it should be nice and crunchy. So let me take them out now, and I'll show you what we've got. pretzel-like. They have a very nice crunch to them, even right out of the oven. And the texture inside is light and airy. That's a function of the way the dough was made and the two risings, the first fermentation and then letting it rise after they were shaped. They have the color of a pretzel and they have a pretzel-like flavor. So I think for a more helpful, lower sodium product, these work very well. They're not expensive to make. And you might even experiment adding a little whole wheat to them to see if you can preserve the airiness. That needs a little tweaking. My first attempts with whole wheat were not good. But that remains another avenue to explore. So if you want to make your own crunchy little pretzels, here's a good way to do it. Thanks for watching the video and enjoy.